Welcome back everyone. This is going to be my new video all about how Marvel is using the Hawkeye series to set up Daredevil and Young Avengers projects. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing a giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just let me know what you want them to do with the Daredevil characters in the MCU during Marvel Phase 4. Because it seems like a bunch of them are coming back really soon. Careful for spoilers from Hawkeye Episode 1 and Episode 2 if you haven't seen the first couple of episodes yet. But a little while ago, the showrunner of Hawkeye said that there were a couple of big fan favorite characters and storylines that he pitched to Marvel for the Hawkeye series that Kevin Feige told him he couldn't use because they were already using them in other Marvel series and movies. And during that interview, he also talked a lot about Kate Bishop setting up Young Avengers. He also talked a lot about Daredevil characters. So what I'll do is I'll talk about the Daredevil Easter eggs and how Hawkeye is setting that up in different ways. Like they're still doing Daredevil stuff very clearly. And Vincent D'Onofrio seems like he's doing everything he can to let everybody know that he is in the Hawkeye series. And then I'll talk about the Young Avengers Easter eggs and how they're setting that up during the Hawkeye series. But during the past couple of episodes, most of you have spotted some of the bigger Daredevil Easter eggs. There are some that are more obvious than others. A lot of the episodes take place in Hell's Kitchen. We've already got a major confirmed Daredevil character in episode two, Echo. She's obviously getting her own spinoff series, and I'll talk about how that's also going to be related to Daredevil. But it was no coincidence that they introduced her character, Bathes, in red light. They're doing everything they can to make you think of Daredevil. Most of you also probably know that they borrowed a lot of the plot from the Matt Fraction Hawkeye run. Kingpin is also a big character during that as well. During episode one, Kate Bishop, her mother Eleanor Bishop, Jack Duquesne, aka Swordsman, all attend a gala event at this black market auction that takes place at the same hotel Kingpin bought and used as his home base during Daredevil season three. That was one of the biggest comments I saw in my episode one video. Isn't that the same hotel that Kingpin bought during Daredevil season three? You are correct, so pat yourself on the back if you spotted that. While Kate Bishop is snooping around the hotel, she overhears a conversation where Armand Duquesne, Jack's rich uncle, is yelling at her mother, Eleanor, claiming he's learned some dirty secret about her business, Bishop's security, claiming that her empire was built on lies and that she shouldn't push him around or try anything sus because he also has powerful friends. Then later, he's mysteriously found dead, murdered, with all kinds of theories about who did it and why. More on that in a second. But the powerful friends line is also supposed to be a kingpin New York City mob reference because of the ties that Kate Bishop's family has to the mob in the comics. Now in the comics it was her father, but it seems like for the series they've changed that to be her mother, and her mother is the one that's in with the mob. You can also see that when the tracksuit mafia raids the auction looking for the watch, which itself is a huge easter egg, they're all wearing red, like red tracksuits. Eleanor is wearing a very deep red dress and also asks Kate Bishop before they go to the gala to put on a red dress that she picked out for her. When the raid on the auction actually goes down later, bomb explodes, alarms going off everywhere, the whole barroom just erupts upstairs in panic, people fleeing, running everywhere. Eleanor does not seem bothered at all, like she's not surprised. The only time she actually shows any concern is when Kate Bishop disappears and she starts worrying about her as if to imply that Eleanor was somehow in on the heist. Also, Jack Duquesne, swordsman, doesn't seem like he was particularly surprised by the raid when it happens. He just casually picks up Hawkeye's Ronin sword from the rubble like he knew it was going to happen the whole time. So the early theory is that Eleanor is controlling the tracksuit mafia using Bishop's security, and they're just this very low-level group of bumbling villains, mostly there for comedic relief, which is the way that Matt Fraction used them in his Hawkeye run, mostly there for comedic relief, like very low-level enforcers. And here's where we bring it back around to Daredevil Kingpin setting that up in the background. During episode two, Hawkeye lets himself be captured by the tracksuits so that he can find out how far this goes up the food chain, like, who is your boss? I would like to speak to your manager came here <clears throat> to talk to your boss. All right. I mean, is that him there? I would really like to speak to your boss. That's why you're here. They tell him she wants him alive, and the she I think that they were referring to is meant to be Echo. Echo is a core Daredevil character from the comics. Like I said, they introduce her bathed in red light, just like Daredevil. During his comics, she started out as a villain, but then becomes more of an anti-hero, falling in love with him. Her father was an enforcer for Kingpin until he killed him, then lied to Echo, framing Daredevil for the murder, raising her to be an assassin, really badass assassin at that, and eventually used her against Daredevil until she learned the truth that Kingpin really killed her father. 
We're supposed to get some of Echo's backstory during that. We'll see her father in flashbacks, so there'll be a version of that storyline. They might just switch it and have Ronan be the person who killed her father. But this is what it seems like the power structure is like inside the Hawkeye episodes. At the bottom, you have the tracksuits, casual enforcers, bumbling idiots. Echo seems like she's in charge of them, and Echo and the tracksuits are probably working for Eleanor Bishop, who's using her Bishop's security technology to help the more powerful New York City mob families. And it seems like she's just using the tracksuits for her grunt work, like raiding the auction to get the watch. Then above Eleanor Bishop is probably Kingpin. She's probably secretly working for him, using Bishop's security to help him control New York City on the DL. And Kingpin himself is just using his original tactics of staying in the shadows off everyone's radar. For those of you asking about the continuity of this, like if they're bringing the Daredevil characters back, which it seems like they are, like Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin, Charlie Cox's Daredevil character, some of the other Netflix Daredevil characters coming back, does that mean that they'll try to canonize the events of the Daredevil series? The way Charlie Cox explained it is if they all came back, it would probably be sort of a creative reimagining. So I'm not expecting when they do come back for them to reference a lot of what happened during Daredevil season three, for instance, like when Kingpin eventually shows up in the MCU, he will probably still be a bit of a mystery to most people. It would probably happen to Kate and Eleanor after the Battle of New York, just charting the timeline here about how Eleanor got in with the Kingpin. Early theory, her father said that they were about to go bankrupt, but he had this plan to fix that. Her mother had that line about solutions not falling out of the sky. Well, early theory, her father saw the Battle of New York go down five seconds later, Shatowry literally falling from the sky is an opportunity to fake his death so that maybe Eleanor could collect the insurance money, save her and Kate from bankruptcy, and Eleanor just used that money to start Bishop's security and develop those connections to the New York City mob kingpin who helped the business grow and turn it into this empire, quote unquote, built on lies, like Armand was yelling at her. I should have known your empire was built on lies. During episode one, she talks a lot about how she didn't come from money. She was poor, unlike Kate's father, who grew up in a rich family. If you remember, Kingpin is the exact same. He grew up in a very poor New York City family, then slowly built his crime empire. So it will make sense that he and Eleanor see eye to eye on a lot of things. I'm also starting to like the theory now that it was actually Eleanor who had Armand killed to prevent him from digging too deep into her bishop's security business and learning about her secret ties to Kingpin. So other side theory, her mother will probably wind up being the MCU version of Madame Mask, who is a longtime Kate Bishop antagonist and shows up during the Matt Fraction Hawkeye run. She also runs a bit of a shady black market auction like the one we saw in episode one. It also seems like Eleanor's hiding some special fighting skills too. And that's why I think they had that scene of her flipping the food in episode one into her mouth, just to show you that she does have some skills. And bringing it back around to the Echo character, who's going to be really big during the rest of the episodes, there's a report that during her spinoff series, we already know they're doing it, they hyped it up during the big Disney Plus Day presentation, they're going to use that to bring back most of the core Daredevil Netflix characters, and it'll feel kind of like a Daredevil season four. And then after that, the characters will go on to a full-blown Daredevil revival series on Disney Plus. For those of you that want them to do a new Daredevil series with those characters, there have also been a lot of rumors about Charlie Cox showing up for a cameo scene during Spider-Man No Way Home and also showing up in the Marvel She-Hulk series. So like I said, the Hawkeye showrunner sounded like he wanted to use Charlie Cox's Daredevil during Hawkeye and Kevin Feige told him no because we're already using him in a bunch of other things right now. As for the Young Avengers Easter eggs, the showrunner also spent a lot of time talking about how their version of Haley Steinfeld's Kate Bishop was meant to feel like the Young Avengers version of Kate Bishop, as opposed to the Matt Fraction version. Because even though they're doing the Matt Fraction comic book story, during that, she's actually more the voice of reason, and it's Hawkeye that's the crazy one, and they've kind of reversed that. So like Hawkeye is the person who's trying to be reasonable, and MCU Kate Bishop is being a little bit crazier. He also referenced some Young Avengers storylines about Kate Bishop being with the Young Avengers. And like I said, he claims Kevin Feige told him there were a couple storylines that he couldn't do or reference because they were already doing those in other series and movies. We know that they're doing some Young Avengers setup in Ant-Man 3 Quantumania because they recast Cassie Lang's stature with an even bigger actress and they have Kang the Conqueror, longtime Young Avengers villain. During Hawkeye episode one, a lot of you noticed the watch the tracksuits try to steal is a huge Young Avengers Easter egg. There were a lot of comments about this on my episode one video. When they hold it up, the lot 268 number is an Easter egg for Avengers 268, a big Kang the Conqueror storyline. 
So a watch, a timepiece, Kang the Conqueror, master of time during Marvel Phase 4. We know we're going to see many different versions of the character in upcoming projects, different variants in Loki Season 2, Ant-Man 3, perhaps also during a Young Avengers series, because we know they're doing Young Avengers, setting that up in the background of a lot of these Marvel Phase 4 projects with the different members of the team from that initial roster. Like we have Billy and Tommy that we got during WandaVision, we'll probably see older versions of their characters in the future. Now we have Kate Bishop from the Hawkeye series, we have Cassie Lang coming. There are other members of the team they could substitute, like Kamala Khan's Miss Marvel and Riri Williams. Originally, what I think the Hawkeye showrunner wanted to do was have more overt Young Avengers Easter eggs, and Kevin Feige is probably like, no, 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 you get to back off on that because we're already kind of using Ant-Man 3 for some of that. But there'll be a lot more Daredevil and more Young Avengers Easter eggs in the rest of the episode, so when we see those, I'll be sure to point those out in my videos. My full Hawkeye Episode 3 video will post next on Wednesday, just like normal, so make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss that. Everyone click here for my brand new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer video, and click here to learn all about them doing Spider-Man 4 in a brand new trilogy of Spider-Man movies. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.